Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Sorry, it's been a while. I realized it was like a week and a half since I uploaded a video. So I'm filming this tonight, gonna try and edit it and upload it by tomorrow sometime. So that'll be Monday. If you're watching this one, I just uploaded it, hopefully on Monday, happy Monday. Today's video is gonna be about the P365. It's a long time in the making or testing rather. It's been asked about a ton. So this video's gonna be about that. Let me see if I can scrounge together some shooting clips real quick. Okay, so the P365, this video, as a lot of my videos, is just gonna be my opinion, kind of rambling me, talking about, giving my thoughts, and real world use of the gun. I've been carrying it for a while now in one of my holsters. I guess this is a quick announcement. So this is a holster, I make and sell holsters, llod.us if you want more info on them. And I've been hit up at least 100, 200, 300 times. When are you gonna start making a holster? for the P365. I've been selling them now for a little bit, kind of soft launched them. In any case, if you're looking for a holster for them, they are available now. So it's a gun I've been carrying for a little bit and I really like it. It's a gun, SIG launched it very poorly. It was riddled with problems, sights, striker issues, all, all kinds of stuff, mag stuff. So very sloppy launch, but the gun has a lot of potential and I really, really like it. If you buy a gun right now, I think most of those problems are ironed out. If you have one of the earlier models, you can send it in. I, apparently, SIG is really good with the replacements. My model I got at the end of last year and does have some primer drags. That's where the striker drags more than it needs to on the primer and will eventually lead to the failure of the striker. If you're wondering, if you see my hands here, I have been working on this, actually. This is my, this is my new YouTube room. It's kind of like the entryway to my house. I'm in a new house for those of you that follow along. And I have a room finally that I can dedicate to YouTube so I can get sound dampening and lighting and camera and tripods and just leave it all set up so it'll be easier for me to make videos. The room isn't fully set up, but I did find some time to get a bunch of boards and stain them and cut them and hang them on the wall. So that's this, maybe I'll do a tour at some point. Anyway, yeah. So we're here, we're talking about the P365. It's gonna be mostly a rambling video. You know, I'll show features on the gun and stuff, but it's gonna be me talking. So largely, if you wanna to toss on some headphones, you can kinda just listen to me talk. So I haven't had any failures with the gun so far. My guess is that the striker will fail. Apparently it's around a thousand rounds. I have probably about 700 to 800 through mine. So this isn't like a crazy torture test, a long-term review. It's just my thoughts on the gun in general taking its issues kind of out of the equation. They, they don't need to be taken out of the equation because they are important issues. But for the most part, I'm gonna be talking about this gun like it's a fully functioning gun that you have sent to SIG and they have given it back and it's all restored and good to go. So a long time ago, I made a video about concealed carry. This gun's been cleared beforehand, so don't worry too much. 
and I talked about the three C's, and this was just the three C's I made up. Maybe other people use it, I don't know. But it, it's comfort, concealment, and capacity. You can basically choose two of the three for a carry gun. For instance, you can have comfort and concealment, AKA a small gun, but you give up capacity or carrying a gun with like six rounds or something. Or you can have capacity and you can have comfort, but you're giving up some concealment really because if it's gonna be comfortable, it's not using all of the crazy claws and all this kind of weird stuff. Or you can have capacity and concealment and then you're giving up comfort either by like really deep ride height or a bunch of claws and stuff that are super, super uncomfortable. My holsters do try to solve that and I think they do a really good job. But again, I'm not really talking about my holsters, but this gun, the P365, tries to solve those problems by giving you a very small compact gun, concealable and comfortable, and giving more capacity than other guns in the size have given historically. There's a couple guns it kind of really stacks up nicely to that are popular, the most popular guns anyways, and that is the Glock 26 which is a favorite of mine. I carried this exact one for a number of years before switching to what is currently my primary carry gun, which is a Glock 19. Again, all of these guns have been cleared beforehand. This is the Pierce Plus One grip extension that I liked carrying with this gun. Now we have the P365, which is a smaller footprint overall, and it's thinner. And it has the same, by default, 10 round capacity in the mags. I'm gonna grab some mags with some bullets in them. Don't freak out. So here we have, for the sake of comparison, this is with a little finger extension. This is with a Pierce Plus One. So these mags are actually pretty similar in size. So I don't think that the SIG mags are as revolutionary as everyone else is making them out to be. They're very similar in width, height, and all dimensions. And Glock has like the plastic coating around their mags as well. So like a Glock 26 mag, which is really old, is really pretty close in dimensions to the revolutionary SIG mag. Not to say the mag isn't great and the size isn't great, it is, indeed smaller than the Glock 26, but not in leaps and bounds like other people are talking about. And then the other gun it compares to, and we'll just compare mags while we're on the subject, is the Glock 43. Now this comparison is more pathetic for the Glocks because the mags are very similar in size, dimensions, height, and the Glock mag by default only carries six, whereas the SIG carries 10. So the 43 mag is pretty pathetic, but the Glock 26 mag is actually pretty Good. Now the Glock 43 is also a bigger gun than the P365. It's a little longer. It's just a hair taller as well. And you're only getting six rounds plus one in the chamber by default on the 43. Whereas you're getting 10 plus one on the P365. Now the gun is pretty small. The grip is pretty short front to back. And with the extension, I can almost kind of get a full grip with my pinky on here. I have pretty average size men's hands. I wear like a mechanics size large. They do have another mag though, which is this 12 round mag. Now the 12 round mag obviously is taller and gives you a better grip. With the 12 round mag, I can pretty much get a full purchase on the gun. Now the gun is small for sure, and other than the, the major issues of actual full failure, which is a major issue, the gun has run very smoothly for me. I've had no, no errors with it. For specs and size and weight and all that stuff, just go look it up online. I'm gonna be talking about how it feels in hand, and it feels good. The magazine release is pretty easy to get. I know some people have issues with getting this normally and they're using like their offhand uh, carry trainer is one of them. I don't have any issues manipulating the controls on this how I normally would on a Glock. The slide, catch, stop, release, whatever you wanna call it, is easy to manipulate. And the magazine release isn't as easy as something like a Glock, but it's not too difficult for me. The main issue that I run into here is when I do drop the mag, you really have to get your hand out of the way. So I can't just hit it because all my palm of my hand and everything here 
really catches it. So I really need to break my grip and drop it like that. That's how I need to release the magazine. Which comes to the next point, reloading the mag. You can't just slam it in. This thing really pinches my hand right here if I try to slam it in. So again, you gotta kind of break your grip and tweak it. And when you're going for the reload, kind of do something a little funky. Now, is that the end of the world? Not necessarily the end of the world for me. It's just kind of a training issue. You will need to train. You will need to get more accustomed to it. It's not gonna run as smoothly as something like a Glock 19 where you can just I can reload and do everything with a Glock 19 very fast. This is gonna be slower. But with a lot of practice, you can get proficient at it, obviously. Another area where a small gun isn't as easy is getting your initial firing grip, your good purchase. It's just, it's smaller and it's not as easy to do. I got the hang of it pretty well, so my draw stroke and speeds were about the same, a little slower than uh, my normal carry gun, a Glock 19. Uh, the sights are fine. They are night sights with a brighter kind of fluorescent -y front sight, and they are the ledge style, so you could rack this one hand manipulation if you need to. The trigger's okay. Some people like this kind of trigger. Let me see, I'll go this way. So it is not like a crisp break, there's just some pre travel and then it breaks. There's not like a glass like break or anything like that. And then the reset is relatively short, audible, but where this thing really shines is there's not much over travel at all. It really stops on a dime with the over travel. The trigger is okay, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I've had no issues with it. it it works all right. So the controls, the trigger, the sights, all that stuff is pretty good, especially considering the size. It's not a soft shooter, it is small and it is light, but I found it not to be unbearably snappy. Like I think the shield is a little snappier, I think the Glock 43 is a little snappier. For me, for my hands, for how I grip it, your mileage may vary. It is snappy, but I don't think quite as snappy as the shield or the Glock 43. I think it is more snappy than another small gun kind of in its category, the XDS. I think the XDS is less snappy than this guy. And the Glock 26 also I think is less snappy than this guy. But overall shooting this isn't bad at all. Um, it's not gonna be a gun you're gonna wanna put thousands of rounds through in one day probably, but you could. It has nice texture here. It's honestly, it's a little bit aggressive against your stomach. I don't wear an undershirt or anything like that. It's something you can get used to, no problem. It's not gonna make you bleed or anything like that. But it is more aggressive than something like my stippled Glock even. Now you can get some Glocks really aggressively stippled, but the ones I have are more for concealed carry use and they are a little less rough against the body than this. This is kind of similar in feel to the Smith & Wesson M&P uh, M2.0s, if you're familiar with those. Maybe just a hair less aggressive, but it does a good job. There are some areas where I wish it just had more, but it's not too bad. It allows you to get a nice high grip, not the texture, the grip itself, and it allows you to get a nice high grip and get pretty high up on the gun here. So it does cut back up here, and that's, that's pretty good. It does have a proprietary rail system, which I hate whatever, SIG wants to do it. They're selling, they do it so they can sell their own lights and stuff. There are third party aftermarket solutions that you basically clamp onto here and it adds an accessory rail down below. Those are cool, they, they allow you to add any kind of light you want and, and kudos to them. What I don't really like is they are adding height. So then you have the rail up here, then you're adding an extension down so the rail is down even lower. And then you have your light or your accessory which is dropping it even lower, which kind of makes holsters weird. It kind of makes manipulation weird. It's not a perfect solution, but it is a solution. If this gun just had a normal accessory rail on it, it would be 10 out of 10. The controls are all very slim, very sleek, goes well into the holster. It's a very thin, compact gun overall. Very, very comfortable to carry. Does have obviously serrations up front and in the back. Makes it easier for racking or press checking if you wanna do that kind of stuff. So I don't know, is there anything else I need to talk about about the gun? Maybe you have some questions. Those were kind of the main points I wanted to drive home. Uh, it's a pretty popular gun, so the aftermarket support is pretty good for it, even though it's relatively new. 
more holsters are coming out, including my own. And it's, is it a good gun for concealed carry? That's kind of, that's the, that's the main thing. It is a gun designed for concealed carry that you might need to trust your life on. So the only reason I would say no, it might not be the best option is because of that uh, striker, that potential for striker break. Now in pretty much everything that I've researched, it's not breaking immediately. And it's pretty like, 1,000 to 2,000 rounds is when it breaks. So it's a little gun. There's honestly not gonna be many people putting that many rounds through this gun, though they obviously exist. They're obviously out there. I would encourage you to put that many rounds through the gun and more yearly. But if you're honest with yourself, are you gonna put that many? I don't know. If you're not, it's probably a great gun. If you are and you're regularly keeping on top of the services, setting it into, setting it into SIG, getting it fixed, then I think it can be a really, really great gun for concealed carry. The main gripe is a lot of people are saying, I'm not gonna trust my life to that, something that can fail. And I get that mentality 100%. Ultimately, that decision is gonna be up to you if you feel like you can trust it with your life or not. But taking that aside, which again is a very big, it's a very important point, so I'm not trying to make light of it, but taking that out of the equation, is this gun good for concealed carry? I think absolutely yes. It is super, super, super comfortable. Shoots relatively well. You can carry a spare mag uh, and you can get uh, a decent amount of capacity, especially if you carry both 12 round mags. That's only three rounds shy of a Glock 19, which is my favorite carry gun. But the, the 19 coming from somebody that carries and loves the 19, and I mean, I carry it, no problem, but much less comfortable, significantly less concealable than the P365. There's no getting around it. You carry a bigger gun, it's not gonna be as comfortable, it's not gonna be concealable. If somebody's telling you something different, they're lying to you because it's, it's literally science. So, the P365, I, I love it. Am I gonna switch to it as my concealed carry gun? Probably not, I'm so comfortable with the 19. I carry it, my lifestyle, my clothing, everything in the Glock 19 for me works great. However, if you're a guy who is honest with yourself or girl and needs a smaller gun, you say the Glock 19 is not gonna work. It's just, I'm not gonna carry it. Maybe once in a while when I have a jacket, I'll carry it, but I'm not gonna carry a gun that big. For you, the P365 I think is the best option for the small guns. There is stuff like the 43X, the 48, they're all bigger. Um, nothing wrong with those guns. If you are a diehard Glock person and you really wanna carry the 43X or the 48, go for it. But at that point, I'd probably opt for a 26 or a 19. And all of those things taken in consideration, the P365 still is quite a bit smaller therefore more concealable and more comfortable. I'm kind of beating a dead horse at this point. I think it's a great gun. I probably won't switch to it, but there are certain situations, maybe if I'm wearing a really light summer t-shirt and some shorts or something like that, and I just need something just a little more comfortable, I'm gonna be sitting all day, I'm gonna be doing something where, I don't know, something where I'll be printing and it'll be more obvious Maybe I'd carry a P365 for something like that. I've actually been carrying this. I went on some road trips to, to Utah. I do a lot of off-roading. This is more comfortable carrying. I always carry uh, when I drive. I carry every day. I carry all day, every day, pretty much. So I carry in my car appendix like I normally would. And the P365, due to its shorter slide barrel length, is more comfortable when you're seated than something like a Glock 19. Again somebody tells you differently, they're, they're lying to you. So, great option, those are my thoughts. Again, feel free to ask questions down below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. I always like hearing from you. Let me know how this video was, this kind of format. It's, I like doing rambling videos because I can get as much information in the way that I wanna get it out and I feel like I can explain it to certain people well that way. So let me know if this video worked out for you. Also, as always, let me know uh, Kind of video topics you want me to talk about in the future. There are some coming up. Let me tell you about them. So that's kind of it. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up and get subscribed to the channel if you haven't. I really appreciate your views, your comments, your likes, all that stuff. I'm going to get into some kind of announcement y stuff now. So, yeah. 
I have some video topics that I want to cover coming up. So if you're following the channel, whether you like it or hate it, I've been doing a lot of kind of off-roading truck centric stuff. I really like it. There's a big carryover between kind of preparedness, overlanding, bugging out. Like I like that. I like all that stuff and I'm a, I'm a huge gearhead. So it's like EDC on steroids, the truck world. And I, I love it. And I'm sorry if you're just like a diehard gun guy and you hate truck stuff. It's, it is what it is. But the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing, if you're into guns, this should really make you happy, is that I am now getting exposure to a bunch of people in the off-road overlanding truck space that either don't have an interest in guns and absolutely hate guns, and I hear about that in comments and messages and emails all the time, but there's a more open-minded crowd that say, hey, I maybe haven't been interested in guns before, but what you say makes a lot of sense. And you don't seem like a crazy gun nut and you carry a gun, so there must be something to it. So I'm reaching a new audience that is either developing a new interest in guns or wants to buy their first gun or wants to carry a gun when they go out traveling or whatever. So it opens up a great door for me to talk to them and also you, the kind of gun nut as well, if you want. So I'm gonna be making some videos coming up. One's gonna be, hey, so you're buying your first gun. Let me give you some tips. Let me give you some advice on caliber, type of gun, weapon systems, brands, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna make that video. And then I'm gonna make another video, which is basically like, hey, Mike, what guns do you take with you camping? So I'm gonna talk about that in that context, both about you know gear, the actual guns I take, and then also mindset, things to think about as far as your personal safety and security of your campsite, that kind of stuff. Um, so kind of some topical videos coming up that should hopefully blend the things that I'm into and kind of, again, expose uh, new gun curious people to guns from someone that is uh, fairly knowledgeable in both kind of worlds. So yeah. That's coming up. I always, the comment I always get is like, when are you gonna make more gun videos? And I'll make them when I make them. I'm not anti-gun. I'm not, not showing guns on the channel anymore. It's just, you know, they'll work in when they work in. So some fun stuff coming. I do have a giveaway also of a agency syndicate build, which will be another video coming up hopefully in the next week or two or three, but hopefully in the next week or two, where I'll be talking about the syndicate uh, shooting surplus sent one out and they're giving me a sick, sick giveaway. You can either get a syndicate kit or you can get a, basically a $1,200 shopping spree on their website for whatever you want. So stay tuned for that. Get subscribed to the channel, notification squad, all that stuff. Anyway, it was great talking to the camera, but talking to you guys too. Look forward to reading your comments. As always, thanks for hitting that thumbs. Thanks for hitting that thumbs up button. Get subscribed to the channel. And until next time, take care.